Hi, I'm Amy DeGees, the chairwoman of the Hudson County Democratic Organization and a lifelong resident of Jersey City and Hudson County. I'm presenting to you today the HCDO Retro Program, where we will discover the history of Hudson County, the Democratic Organization, and talk to all of the influential people who helped shape what it is today. My first guest is a very special guest to me and to Hudson County. He is the county executive um, and he's also my dad, Tom DeGeese. Tom DeGeese first ran for public office in 1989, and despite losing, he resurrected himself and became elected under Brett Schellner's team in 1993, I believe. Uh, served as the longest municipal council president, ran for mayor of Jersey City, and despite losing, bounced back and became the county executive in 2001 and has continued in that position. So today we're going to pick his brain and see how Hudson County has changed. All right. Thank you for coming on, Dad. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, uh, you know, you said you're a lifelong resident in the Jersey City. Me too, but my life's a little longer than yours. A tad bit longer. And tad one bit. mistake, and you know, I won't correct everything. I got elected with uh, Brett, the Brett Schundler team in 2003. No, Brett Schundler, 1990? Uh, 1993. 1993. Let me say, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Until 2001? Uh, until 2001. Okay. That, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So what got you involved in politics or what built up that interest to become involved? You know, I, I think I, I've always had that, uh, that feeling that I wanted to be involved in that. When I was in the, uh, I went to St. Michael's High School in Union City. You played a little basketball up there. I used to take you up there. And uh, at St. Michael's, uh, the, you know, I was there. I graduated in 1968. 68 was the year Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. 68 was the year... Martin Luther King uh, wa was assassinated. And um, for young men like me at that time, even more importantly was the war in Vietnam, that they were just shipping you, shipping you out uh, at, at that point. And uh, uh, there was a candidate running for um, president, a peace candidate by the name of Eugene McCarthy. Minnesota, part poet, part politician, very attractive to young people like me. Uh, but he was a bit of a minor candidate. And uh, I called, I sent a letter saying I wanted to volunteer on his campaign, except that in New Jersey they didn't have any campaign. <laughs> so I got a, one day I get a, a, an envelope uh, mailed to the house with bumper stickers and things. And I went and I gave them all out. Needless to say, Eugene McCarthy went nowhere uh, with that one. But it was, it was my uh, first taste uh, of it. After that, life kind of, you know, go to college. Uh, I love playing ball uh, a lot. Kind of got away from it. But your aunt, Aunt Lois, my older sister, she got involved in uh, 19, around 1973. Okay. And um, she, there was uh, uh, the mayor of Jersey City at that time, Tom Whalen, who was mm -hmm. a Heights guy, yeah. uh, there um, wound up being convicted. They found, they went into the basement and they found um, garbage cans filled with cash. And so I think it was the Hudson Five, the c council president, the mayor, and various other guys all were convicted. And people uh, were tired because, you know, the legend of Haig and the memory of Haig, Frank Haig, was still very much uh, alive there. So there was a group of reformers in which your aunt Lo was one of them that put together a, a ticket that would end the corruption and the, the bad politics in Jersey City in, in particular at that time. And they picked a candidate for a special election, Dr. Paul Jordan. And Paul Jordan had affiliations from St. Peter's College, which was 
big time, not like it is now. Right now, it's kind of like just another school. At that time, you know, the Peacocks got good basketball teams. That, that was the school it was hard to get into uh, and stuff. And um, they ran against the machine, uh, a fellow by the name of Gang Jemmy uh, there, and Paul Jordan won that. They had to go in, that, that was for a special election uh, there, and so in order to win the four-year term, they had to run again. And there was a move to, uh, at that point, there was only one woman who had ever served on the city council, and she was a Republican. Can't think of the name. Uh, but they picked Aunt Lo to be the, uh, the person. She had baby carriages she was pushing around there. She was very pretty, Aunt Lo still is, but I mean, she was very pretty. And they put her, her on the ticket, and she won. And she was a council, uh, council at large, like I was, or me like her, anyway, uh, you know, for four years. But four years later, the machine came back with Tommy Smith and the Paul Jordan group split because Paul Jordan wanted to run for governor. You don't know how many people in Jersey City make the mistake. They win one election, they think they could win for governor. This was a, 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 another one for that. So Aunt, Lo, Aunt Lowe ran on a ticket with Billy Mackey uh, there and lost. And at that point, I was engaged to your mom, uh, getting ready to, to get married, and I was a non-tenured teacher at Dickinson. I was uh, teaching history. When the new crowd came in, they fired me. Uh, for no other reason is that I was on the wrong side in the election. And really what I did in that election was like put up signs. There was a brigade of teachers and we went around hammering signs onto poles, putting them up on people's houses with permission and all that, going to the fairs, drinking a lot of beer, doing, doing things like that. I really wasn't overly involved. I was just uh, a mule yeah. <laughs> in, in a thing, but it made no difference. They, fu they fired me. And that led to um, saying, okay, you know, uh, if that's the way this is, uh, I'll, I'll retaliate. I'm not going to take this lying down. And one of the people that was uh, elected on the, um, on the uh, this side with Tommy Smith was Jerry McCann. Jerry and I went to St. Peter's together. We weren't particularly friends, not enemies either, it just different groups, but we were the same age played some basketball against each other in intramurals and stuff like that. And he w lived in Greenville, I believe in the same house that he uh, lived then. Yeah. And um, uh, he called me up at uh, home. Yeah. I had uh, taken a job with a realtor, John Byer, you know, I was trying to hustle up a living, you know, for me and my new bride and everything. And uh, uh, Jerry called me up, it was a surprise, and he told me, I'm gonna run for mayor. And I think I'm going to do really good in Greenville. You know, everybody knows me and my family there, but I don't really know a whole lot of people in the Heights. Mm. And uh, if you could help me, I would greatly appreciate it. I know that, you know, you've been up there forever. Yeah. And so that was my chance for revenge. Oh. Well, uh, that <laughs> let's pause there for a second. We have to take a quick break and we'll get back to this story. Too long? No? Uh, just under the Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub, with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. 
carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation, consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation, credit cards and debit cards accepted, financing available, consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens, Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272. All right, and we're back. All right, so Jerry McCann calls. He has Jerry a master McCann plan. Jerry McCann called, yeah, yeah. And I was working on a real estate agency, buyer, my good friend John Beyer. And uh, so Jerry said, I'll meet you on the corner of South Street and Central Avenue, or I told him to meet. I said, I'm there. And I said, I'll walk you around. And, and, and uh, so he, he came, balloons, uh, sound trucks, all the like old type campaigning it was. This was yeah. uh, and Jerry was really good. He was a distance runner. He was in great shape. He, he could campaign hard. And you know, he was a young guy. We we're uh, only a couple months apart in age. And so at that time, I guess we were, you know, about 31. Wow. You know, so we were young. Yeah. And so he said, where are we going? So I said, let's go down this way. And so we went down by St. Paul the Cross. Then we made a right and everything. And he said, I got an hour. Then I got to go someplace else. So I timed it so that we went around and we walked back to the, where the cars all were right about an, an, an hour. Yeah. And that impressed everybody. Everybody said, whoa, like, you know, you, that, that worked out really well and, and stuff. And uh, so later on, he called me up and he goes, you want to be the ward leader? I said, what's a ward leader? He goes, you run all the political stuff uh, and uh, you, would you want to be the ward leader? I said, yeah, okay, I'll be, I'll be the ward leader. And that's really what uh, yeah. got me involved at a lot higher level yeah. than that. And Jerry won in a tremendous upset uh, there. Yeah. You know, and that got me started in 1981. Wow, that was the year my older sister was born. Too. Yeah. yeah, that's what I had said. Like, you know, uh, me and your mommy, we were just starting out. You yeah. know, we bought the little house on Congress Street, 102 Congress Street, and we bought it, you know, with no money. Uh, uh, we had, we borrowed a little bit from here, borrowed a little bit from there, lied a little bit on the application that we, we had some money. And the owner held the mortgage, so we didn't have to go to a bank or anything like oh, that. Wow. And we bought a house uh, with it, and that, oh. and that, uh, that started it. Yeah. That, that started it. And then what prompted your first run for council? Well, we did it. Uh, Jerry ran for uh, uh, re-election in 1985. And I was his, still his ward leader. Yeah. I got uh, the teaching job back at um, Dickinson. Uh, and there, you know, when I was selling real estate. Uh, and Jerry was, I would say that from 1981 to 1985, Jerry McCam was probably the best mayor I ever saw in my lifetime. Um, he just changed the way people thought about Jersey City and the possibilities of what it could be yeah. uh, with that. And he was running for, for re-election. Things were going good, and it, it, Jerry and he and I, we've had an up and down relationship over the years, a lot down. But uh, you know, I've told him that, and I told him that your the, your your biggest fault was that you didn't get people to like you. That if you're going to run for office, yet there's a likability factor, and you got to like you, you know, to 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 do it. If they yeah. say you're smart. And you're, you know, you are hardworking, 
But if they don't like you, if they don't think you're a good person, they're not going to vote for you. And that was Jerry's fault. You know, he had a quick mouth that, you know, insulted people, that challenged people. And when it, we were campaigning, for me, mostly in the Heights, I could sense it. I could tell, like, you know, people, and they said, look, crime is down, the property values are up, the streets are cleaner, like, what do you want? Yeah. And they said, like, I just don't like them. And, and, you know, he insulted old people and everything. He lost. The whole thing started again. I got fired again, <laughs> and, you know, from the, uh, from the job. And in 85, I said, all right, uh, next time around, I'm going to run. You know, that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be dependent upon other people, you know, to do it. I keep losing my job all the time, and, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, so I was going to run. So in 1989, uh, Jerry McCann had gotten reelected uh, there, but the, the trip was a short one. He got uh, indicted on some things that he did when he wasn't mayor and did some jail time, and it set up for a special election, both for a council person, because a councilwoman had died, mm. and for a, a, a new mayor okay. uh, with that. There were 21, I decided I wanted to run for Heights Council, and uh, I did. And there were 21 candidates. Uh, there were about 10, 12 mayor candidates uh, there, but I ran for city council with 21 candidates. Wow. I made the runoff. I finished second uh, in the first time around. And um, then I ran, um, you know, in the thing, and I, I lost that one. Yeah. But, I, but I was primed at that point. Everybody had a, my own block association at 28th School with a couple hundred members. It was by far the biggest block association in the Heights. Uh, there was a, a reval, a tax reval at that time. And I used my, I told uh, the people in the block association in the neighborhoods, if you need any help filling out the forms to appeal your taxes, come see me and I'll help you. And we had all the records of comp comparable properties and all that stuff. So yeah. uh, I did that. So I was ripe, even though I lost, I was ripe. Like, yeah. and, and everybody knew it uh, yeah. there. So in 1993, uh, or I, it came around, Brett Schundler was already mayor, finishing up the term of uh, Jerry McCann, who was in jail yeah. uh, there. And then the next year, he had to put a full ticket together. And uh, I wanted to be the Heights Councilman, and there was another guy that wanted to be Heights Councilman, and his name was Billy Gorham. And Billy and I only knew each other very casually, like, Lions Club meetings and stuff like that. But uh, we had a meeting. We were both. We thought we were going to have to run against each other. But Mayor Schundler called us in and said, um, look, I don't want to choose between you. I know that if you two guys ever got together, I'd get every vote in the Heights because Billy was very popular down on the Western Slope and, yeah. and stuff like that. And um, so he said, Tommy, he said, Billy, you're going to be the... Uh, the Ward D council person. And Tom, I want you on more citywide things. I think you can help me more. So you be the at large. And so I was very disappointed. You know, I really was. But me and Billy went to the diner after that, went to the coach house diner. And we said, look, well, if you and I get along, because there were different factions of people in the Heights. Some wanted me, some wanted Billy. And so we said, we're going to get along. And then entered into my life my closest political friend. Yeah, absolutely. I always wow. said with Billy Gorhan that I never had to watch my back because I knew Billy had it every minute. Oh, he definitely did. Yeah. All right. We're going to hear more about this in just a second. We're <clears> taking <throat> our next break. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage. Let us be your good friend. 
Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Hello and welcome back. We're entering in our last segment of our two-part episode with County Executive and my dad, Tom DeGees. All right, so you and Bill Gawhan have met. Uh, you like each other. You love the Heights. Where does that then lead the both of you? Well, you know, the friendship, you know, it stayed until Bill died. You know, that, that kind of, you know, thing would never go away. I, I can remember, though, afterwards, just rhetorically, we would think, who would have won? Like, who would have won? And uh, we were looking down uh, at, at numbers down on the western slope, and Bill was president of the parish council. He buried most of the, you know, the dead yeah. of the families there. His kids went to school there and everything. And I was looking at, uh, you know, the Columbia Avenue thing, and he ran against um, Jackie Schamberg, I believe it was. And the vote was like Gorhan, 442, Schamberg, nine. <laughs> and I said, maybe it was good yeah. that, that I didn't have to run against Bill. <laughs> and everything. But you know, I learned, I think uh, Billy learned a lot about politics and government from me. And I learned even more important things from him, like being a man, how to conduct yourself, uh, you know, just just, uh, you know, being a leader within the community, yeah. you know, uh, I could never dress like him. You know, we were polar opposites on he that. He was very dapper. He was always very dapper and I was always not very dapper, but uh, <laughs> we had, uh, our, it, it was a, a terrific friendship. And when we went, went to the council from 93 to 97, that, you know, my first, and I was the council president at that time, that was probably the best time I ever had in politics was working with that particular group. Melissa Holloway, Harvey Smith, uh, Kathy Mackey, uh, Nancy Gaynor, Reverend Colon, you know, uh, they, I'm leaving a, a few just, uh, we would go out for beers after with Jamie Vasco. Me and Jamie would yell at each other because he was always on the out on one side and I was always on the other. And then one of us would pass a note to the other guy, feel like going for a beer tonight? And go, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, it was nothing personal uh, there. And we, we accomplished a whole lot. And that yeah. was um, a little bit about me and Bill, that we got along. And so I think everybody, we're all rookies there other than Jamie. And we're looking like, what are you supposed to do now that you're up here? And um, I think we set a good tone. And then even on the... Um, the second uh, tour from 97 to 01, when Bobby Cavanaugh and Arnie Bettinger, uh, you know, and people like that came on to the uh, council. And we also had a wonderful time. I, 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 I mean it sincerely when I say that I like that job of council president better then I liked the job of county executive. Wow. Yeah. And Jersey City was changing a lot. I know it was really young, but I do remember what downtown looked like. You know, my mom didn't drive, you know, so we took the bus anywhere, everywhere. Yeah. And if you're going from the Heights to Newport Mall, you were cutting through Journal Square, and then you were going through the downtown area that was a lot of vacant land, a lot of abandoned 
uh, land that you wouldn't normally just walk around in, maybe during the day, but not at night. And it looks so different today and it's so vibrant. Yeah. And I agree with you, like, you know, when Jerry McCann was mayor, he was a visionary. You know, he saw the skyline and said, why are people not buying homes down here and staring at that? And he saw the potential. You know, one of the things that, uh, that I, you know, you start, like I said before, and I'm not going to take it back that, you know, that the best mayor of my time was the first term, not the second term, yeah. that was a disaster, but the first term uh, of Jerry McCann. But all of the mayors that uh, I remember, you know, all, you know, including uh, Brett uh, Schundler, Tony Cucci, uh, Glenn Cunningham, you know, uh, they all, uh, they all left something good behind. And, and being the mayor, sometimes you think it's a brand, new, uh, a brand new enterprise, but being a mayor and transferring the power from one, one person to the next person uh, is important. And I think they all uh, made contributions Absolutely. there. You know, there yeah. was no real stinkers in there. No. They, uh, they had a vision, some of them were different, some of them I agreed with, some of them I still don't agree with them. But everybody, every one of them loved the city. They loved Jersey City and um, were trying to do the right thing by them and uh, yeah. that, that's all of them you know it's kind of like a chapter in the book it's not a brand new book like if a new mayor gets elected you just turn the page you go to the next chapter you don't throw away the book yeah you have to kind of build on that legacy there you know? yeah so by the time Brett is the mayor you know Brett is uh, building upon what Jerry had put together yeah uh, developing the downtown area encouraging more major businesses and banks to to take up some of that vacant land and that scary land and as a you know a real estate agent you know how hard it was to sell a home yeah. what was a home going for near Hamilton Park when you the, uh, this is a true story that um, uh, almost everything that I sold in real estate and I was part-time you know and so enough to help us out a little bit uh, was up in the heights but occasionally through multiple listing uh, you know you would get somebody who's that's interested in a brownstone down downtown yeah and so there was one that a clients of mine wanted to see and it was right by Hamilton Park yeah right by Hamilton Park and um, so I took them down there into the brownstone it was gas on gas heat you know what that is like the stoves go from one end of the uh, uh, yeah. house and there's pipes that yeah. that go it's even then it would that was like yeah. 1930s things you know uh, it, there there was uh, the, all the windows are broken the kitchen needed a new kitchen needed a new bath you look out the window and there were junkies uh, in the park uh, <laughs> there and I'm saying to myself who the hell would buy this who the hell would buy that but it was a brownstone and they bought it for like 25 grand wow. and fixed it up. I guess you knew, you knew they, they had to put $100,000 into it and everything. Yeah. Now it's a million dollar house. And, I'm th and I, I, I sometimes kick myself saying, I could have probably scraped up 25 grand somewhere. Yeah, you, know, really? or you know, I could have yeah. done something and made all that money. But uh, you know, it, that, the city was changing and Again, Jerry, uh, you know, if you go back to Aunt Lois, she'll say, well, the Jordan administration were the first ones to contact the LaFrac family to, yeah. you know, to do it. And you could, there's truth there. Absolutely. You know, there is truth there. But like, I'm taking it as far back as, uh, you know, McCann. Yeah. And Jerry actually put, you know, some meat on, on those bones. That's very nice. All right, I think it's a good way to close our first segment with Tom DeGees. We're going to have him back for part two because you can obviously see we have a lot of stories to share. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in part two.